Welcome to our lecture online and now let's take a look and see if we can get some intuitive feeling for what Markov chains are and how they operate and what they tell us. So without actually working out the problem because I've shown you some examples how to do that and I'll show you some additional examples of how to do that. Here we just want to look at the concept of Markov chains and here is the concept of what we call market penetration. This is where we take a brand new product enter the market with it, we do a bunch of commercials, we do a bunch of special events and we try to get the, the product to be sold on the shelves of stores and then let's see how well it does compared to the competition. Let's say we want to introduce a new toothpaste for example. Let's say we have four brands. We have brand A, B, C and the fourth brand is our new brand X that we're introducing to the market. After some initial startup and giving off lots of samples and, and, and buying store uh, buying space on store shelves and so forth, we find out that we have a 10% penetration in the market uh, compared to a total of 100% for all four brands. Brand A is still the most popular at 40% of the market, brand B 32% of the market, brand C 18% of the market and brand B 10% of the market. So we do an analysis of the market and we see how there's a loyalty to each brand. Notice that whoever buys brand X, 97% of the people who buy brand X go back to the store the next time they go and buy brand X, buy, buy brand X again. Only 90% of the customers who buy brand C continue to buy brand C. The other 10% will try another brand. For brand A, 92% will rebuy brand A and 8% will buy another brand. And for brand B, 94% will buy the same brand and 60% will go and try another brand after that. So we also did an analysis of the market and it shows which other brand people will be likely to, to buy when they bought one brand before. Now we put that into a probability matrix so this matrix here represents what we see graphically here. Just to do one example let's say we take brand C and of course this is remember this is from and this is to. So here we have A, B, C and X and here we have A, B, C and X. So if we take a vertical column for example brand A so brand A will go to brand A 92% of the time, brand A will go to brand B 2% of the time, brand A will go to brand C 1% of the time, brand A will go to brand X 5% of the time. With other words, of every 100 customers that buy brand A, 92%, 92 out of 100 will continue to buy brand A the next week, 2% or 2 out of 100 will buy brand B, 1%, 1 out of 100 will buy, buy brand C and 5 out of 100 will buy, buy brand X the next week. And let's say this pattern continues. Same for brand B. 3% of the people who bought brand E will then buy uh, B will then buy brand A after that. 94% will remain with brand B. 1% will try brand C. 2% will buy brand X and so forth. So the probability matrix represents what happens in the market. The question now is what will happen after a certain amount of time goes by and so it turns out that if we have this as our initial state condition, the starting state, 40%, 32%, 18%, 10% for the four brands, remember this is brand A, B, C and X, after a lot of time has gone by, let's say 30, 40, 50, 60 weeks, we then come to an equilibrium point where now we can see that 56.9% will buy brand X. 9.1% will buy brand C, 17.9% will brand, buy brand B and 16.1% will brand, buy brand A which means our market penetration was very successful. We captured more than half the market out of the four brands and so you can see that this is something that would, then would happen over time that would then of course be numerically visible if we were to multiply um, the probability matrix times the initial condition, then times condition 1, condition 2, condition 3 or we call them state. So state 0, state 1, state 2, state 3, state 4 all the way until we have then an equilibrium state where this will then be the new distribution of product. So those are the kind of things that we do in business to try to find out whether or not we're going to have a successful penetration or not based upon these studies. If these studies and this analysis of Markov chain shows that we will have a very poor penetration, let's say after a whole year we don't be up to 12% instead of 10%, we need to change something. We need to get people to want to buy brand X instead of A, B or C and then we have to find ways to make that happen. But here is how we mathematically calculate that. Now let's take another look at the probability matrix. Right here, let me get a different color. This could be considered like the loyalty number. 
97% will remain with brand X after they bought it, they tried it, they liked it, and 97% will continue to buy brand X, where the other 3% will buy one of the other brands. So let's try another brand instead. If you then go to, let's say, so this is the indication right here of how many people will move away from brand, brand X to A, B, and C. So this is from X to A, B, and C. Now, if you look at this row right here, this tells us how many people will come from other brands to go to brand X. So from A to brand X, from B to brand X, and from C to brand X. So you see that 5% of the customers will come from brand A, 2% of the customers will come from brand B, and 6% of the customers that buy brand C will then skip, uh, jump ship, so to speak, and start buying, buying brand X. So that is how we look at these matrix. We can really look at the matrix and see which ones will be more successful and which ones will be less successful. Typically when you see this, say for example, brand C only has a loyalty factor of about 0.9, which means at the end, brand C customers is down to 9.1% of the total market because they have a much poor, what we call loyalty factor. Here this is 94%, so they do a little bit better. 92%, they don't do quite as well. So you can see that the numbers here are somewhat associated with the breakdown of how the market will be penetrated by those four brands in the long run. It's not the whole story because it depends upon how many of those will then return back to initial brands. So it could be that they may leave with a, by a lot, but a lot will come back as well. So it's not the whole picture, but it gives you kind of an idea how Markov change works and how the probability matrix kind of represents what's happening in the market. And so that gives us an intuitive feel for it. Now we'll show you some more examples and some more tricks of how to calculate these Markov chains.